Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we have some exciting news from BioViva with an update on the gene therapy undertaken by six patients with early symptoms of Alzheimer's. We look at papers on resveratrol reducing uric acid and the impact of a low carb diet on lipoproteins. Also a 105 year old sprinter and more longevity investment news. First a disclaimer, that in this newsletter, we are sharing some news items and recent papers that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters who are very generous to buy us some coffees. It encourages us to continue to share information on aging research. Thank you so much for your support. Here is the paper looking at the impact of resveratrol on uric acid and inflammation in the kidney. Uric acid can build up in the blood and cause gout. In this study, they showed that resveratrol lowered high uric acid and reduced kidney inflammation. They used a high fat diet on mice to induce insulin resistance and cause excess uric acid in the blood and also to inflame the kidney. The outcome was that the resveratrol significantly reduced the insulin resistance and reduced uric acid. In the conclusion, they hypothesize on the mechanism by which resveratrol is working, which is to reduce kidney inflammation and by blocking uric acid transporters, reduce the UA blood level. Interesting to see that resveratrol can help reduce uric acid levels in the blood, which would presumably also help with gout. We're taking celery seed extract to keep our UA levels low, but at least for me, resveratrol may be helping as well. Dr. Sinclair retweeted this story about a 105-year-old woman competing in the 100-meter sprint. She completed the sprint in a little over a minute, but was not satisfied with her time. Definitely an inspiration, showing that you are never too old and to always aim higher. Set. What should, what, what should we tell our listeners and viewers about what we saw today? Just stay healthy and keep running. And I'm going to keep running as long as I can. I find it fun. I like doing it. BioViva, a biotech company and Integrated Health, recently released a video covering the outcome of treating six patients with early symptoms of Alzheimer's with two gene therapies, HTERT and Clotho. The patients were treated in Mexico as the procedure is not yet approved in the US. The video covers the background of the procedure and the results. Here is a short clip about the key outcome, whether or not the patient's cognitive ability improved. Um, now the Folstein testing, I mentioned earlier, uh, it's a test, memory test, association test, character recognition, names, uh, you know, things like that. Alzheimer's disease typically uh, show a decrease at, of three points per year. And this, is, this, this, this graph on the right side shows that one in three years, uh, the point of it is the slope is downward. The score is on the left, 20 to eight, and the time is on the x-axis from left to right, one out to five years. And you can see as each year goes by, their numerical score decreases. And this is what happens in dementia patients, unless you can treat them. Now, up until now, we've had no effective treatments. There are uh, nothing available uh, that in the scientific literature that can be prescri prescribed, can be administered to dementia patients, has managed to slow this decline, slow the disease of dementia, stop it or reverse it. Um, now, uh, what do we see with our patients? This graph, instead of showing a slope, you know, on the y-axis is 30 down to zero and on the x-axis is zero out to 300 days. It's over a little, about 13 months follow-up. Uh, you can see each of the patients had an increase in their Folstein test score, which means they answered more questions uh, than the prior time. Um, and there's a general slope up, upward. Uh, this is completely opposite of what would normally happen if you follow them for 13 months. So this is proof 
that their cognitive skills improved. I can't stress enough that this is, this is not seen. It's not seen with current therapies. First therapy I've ever seen, uh, and, I, and I can probably be, I'm pretty sure that I can say that anybody has ever seen that has reversed cognitive decline in dementia patients. I would consider treating more patients with this therapy, more de dementia patients with this therapy and see how they respond. But also, uh, since the, the processes that, uh, that the HTERT gene and the Clotho gene affect, uh, improve are the same processes that decline with age, even though they're not as dramatic, nobody likes to, to search for words. Nobody likes to have to think where they did they leave something. They, they can't find their keys, their cell phone, uh, all the signs of normal aging. So it, it's, it's, it's uh, I think, appropriate that we should consider looking at this therapy uh, and others to come, I'm sure, as an anti-aging therapy for the brain. It's very safe. It's well tolerated. It improves cognition. Uh, and um, it lengthens telomere. The next paper looked at the effects of a low-carb diet on insulin resistance, dyslipoproteinemia. Lipoproteins include cholesterol, where LDL is low-density lipoprotein. Low-carbohydrate diets show promise for diabetes, presumably by lowering blood sugar levels and requiring less insulin. But there's a concern that the high saturated fat in these diets would have adverse effects, specifically on the cholesterol levels. So this study is looking at how diets with varying amounts of carbohydrate and saturated fats affect cardiovascular disease risk factors while still maintaining weight loss. There were 164 participants in three groups. Protein was constant at 20%. Carbohydrates and fats differed threefold across the three groups, low carb being 20% carb and 60% fat, moderate carb at 40-40, and high carb at 60% carb and 20% fat. Saturated fat was 35% of the fat in all cases. They looked at detailed lipid panel at the beginning and after 20 weeks. LPIR, or lipoprotein insulin resistance, is a novel composite metabolomic marker that captures the multi-dimension effects of insulin resistance on the lipoprotein metabolic chain. We can see that this differed in a dose-dependent manner, being lowest for low carb and highest for high carb. Lipoprotein A is a form of LDL, which specifically has been identified as a risk of atherosclerosis. This was also lower with high fat diet. While the other markers such as HDL and triglycerides were unchanged. The author's conclusion is that the high fat diet improved the LPIR and lipoprotein A without adverse effects on LDL and that carbohydrate restriction might lower CVD risk independent of body weight. I like this as I am not on a ketogenic diet, but I do try to keep my carbs down as much as possible. On the investment in longevity, there was this announcement. The Asteria Institute is teaming up with the Buck in a $70 million collaboration. Astera was founded by Jed McCallab, who also founded the cryptocurrency Stella. It is a nonprofit developing high leverage technology with one of its focuses being longevity. The money will be used to fund Rejuvenome with the aim of conducting a systematic study of potential anti-aging interventions. Rejuvenome will coordinate with aging science community to produce an open and comprehensive data set describing how key biomarkers are impacted by multiple interventions across the lifespan of mice. The goal is to provide a complete picture and to provide a foundation for future aging research. This will include combinations of therapies designed to target multiple aspects of aging at the same time. Hopefully we will see synergistic effects. Good to see a coordinated approach. Hopefully this will help build a better understanding of the key mechanisms of aging and how they interact. We have an update on Dr. Katcher's experiment with E5. This comes from the newsletter published by NTZ. The link to sign up is in the description. One of the rats in the control group has died. Originally there were eight rats in both groups, so there are now seven controls and eight in the treated group. 
The rats were 24 months old in February 2021 when the experiment started, so they are now about 32 months. The treated animals have had three doses of E5 at this point. We will keep you updated as we hear more.